I've, I've come from one colleague that I've known for, for a long time, always in the HEU, to another colleague who actually was my, my PhD supervisor, Dr. Dr. Althea Lafoucard. So I'm going to take my chairman's liberty, and I'm going to give her one more minute. Um, she deserves this. So you'll have 16 minutes. Um, uh, Althea, Althea's, um, uh, a lot of Althea's work has, has also been in the area of, of equity, of, of health financing and, and access and availability of, of services and so on. Um, and she's today um, going to be <coughs> going to be uh, talking more on equity in access to health services, looking at, at the work of Prof. Theodore through the years. So, Dr. Lafoucard, your, your 16 minutes begins in, in one minute. You get two minutes. Okay, thanks. Hello. Okay, yes. And it's not that I'm obsessed with the cell phone. Eh? I will also be keeping myself on time there. Today, I planned I will be speaking about equity in health, but looking really at Professor Theodore's contribution to the thinking pertaining to this topic, equity in health in the Caribbean um, in particular. In some ways, I need to say I'm stepping out of my comfort zone a bit here. As a student in the humanities, my first degree was not in economics and so on, I always wondered what people like Shakespeare and Shaw, Chaucer, Chaucer and those guys, Ralph Elf, Elf, um, Edison and so on, what would they say if they could observe and if they could hear the kinds of interpretations we put on their work? Today then, I'm hoping Professor Theodore would not be jumping out of his seat to say, I beg to differ. But I would be going through and I think trying to not overdo, but to pick out from the many different um, pieces Professor Theodore would have done over the years. And again, I heard about 15 technical reports and different things going on during the past few days. I would say that in doing this piece of research, the research for this um, little presentation, I went through numerous reports. I saw in the case of St. Vincent alone, I ended up going through about 12 reports produced um, by Professor Theodore for that country. In the case of the BVI, I think it was about nine um, documents. So it was a number of reports on different um, discussion and position papers. Professor Theodore, from those things, I will just be talking, um, focusing on about four issues that um, Carl Theodore would have centered his research pertaining to equity in the area of health. And these really would pertain to um, equity and efficiency, equity and development. And again, I'm being a, a, a bit um, hard know something because I don't, I did not qualify my development, although I took the pledge. Um, as um, Salin asked us earlier today. The role of the state pertaining to the achievement of equitable, um, uh, equity, uh, equitable outcomes in the health sector and health financing and equity. In his work, Professor Theodore has, um, well, Prof came into, Professor Theodore came into health from a background in public finance. So focusing on different issues um, in public um, sector finance, including the distribution, as we heard um, a couple of nights ago, of um, water and access to certain basic services, housing and so on, ma mainly to underprivileged um, individuals. He also was focusing a lot on social um, security issues, so what, what we know as national insurance in Trinidad and Tobago. But from there, something happened. In 1986, Professor Theodore started to develop an interest in, in the early 80s in the area of health. And 
with the commissioning of the, um, a collaboration with the power who and himself, he then entered full-fledged into um, research in health economics. Professor Theodore's work, when I do a review of his work, I see that even in those early days, he started off talking about a mixed bag in terms of the financing. How should the financing for health um, be, be flow into the system? And there he started talking about the absolute um, requirement, perhaps, if we are to get equitable outcomes for us to have mixed financing. And we'll see later what we might be meaning by that. He also built his, when I look at the financing of the health system and his works, what I'm seeing is that central to that is solidarity-based financing where we are saying that there is a role for social or national health insurance and for central governments, revenue and financing in the health sector if we are to end up with equitable outcomes. And when I talk outcomes here, I'm talking outcomes in the context, whatever particular context he happened to be dealing with. If we are talking about access, equitable access, if we are talking about equitable outcomes in terms of health status and, and so. The, in terms of the equity, sometimes we, as economists, we could, there might be a little discomfort when we talk about equity. And as Kimberly Ann Gittings Baines mentioned, Equity for the economist just means basically that we are talking about social solidarity, we are talking about um, um, social justice and fairness. And in some cases, in different in cases where we see differences, then what our concern is is that those differences must be um, it, it must be fair. It must not be that we have unfairness. We are not about equality or so. We understand the difference there. The mobilize, as far as Professor Theodore, however, is concerned, he is saying that when we talk about equity, equity and efficiency, he sees as two sides of the same coin. And there is no need, perhaps, to be a little, to, to, to be what we may otherwise be, tend to have some concern that maybe if you go after, if you quest after equity in health, you might be compromising on efficiency. And I see that coming out clearly in Professor um, Theodore's work. The mobilization of the resources, as far as he's concerned, it must come from the, um, the, 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 the ability, we must be thinking in terms of vertical equity and the ability from each according to his ability um, in terms of the distribution of care, the equitable distribution of care, he goes um, in the horizontal equity um, arena. And Prof. C. Professor Theod Theodore sees equity in his paid different um, writings, I'm saying efficiency, sorry, as a facilitator for equity. So to the extent that we are saying we are in resource challenge environments, it may be that, um, and I don't, we don't have the um, time here to go into a lot of details, but to the extent that we are in resource challenged environments, then it may mean that having the, the, the sector operating efficiently might allow for us to get more goods and services to people who may be in need of those goods and services if and when they happen to need access to the services. And it goes back to Arrow 1963, where he is saying that in terms of the demand for the health goods and services, people are really demanding these as option um, goods and so. And here we have some further things that um, prophesying pertaining to that. In terms of equity and development, Theodore has consistently advocated the relationship between equity and the attainment of the development objectives in the Caribbean. And there are two, <laughs> Arthur Lewis and Dudley says, a common thread that I'm seeing across um, Theodore's work is the 
thinking that as we look to understand the workings of the health system as economists, we need to go back to Lewis, where Lewis is saying good economics begins with a concern for the conditions under which people live. We cannot help in terms of as a researcher or a student under um, Carl Theodore's watch, we cannot help but be familiar with, um, with this. And it means, therefore, that in the quest for equity in the health sector, um, that um, this kind of thinking has guided his work. And he twins that with Dudley says, and the fact that insofar as the problems of the region are concerned, we'll be looking at um, Dudley says pointing to unemployment, poverty, and um, some distribution issues that will tend to be challenging. And it means that as far as um, Theodore's work again, when you go through the, um, the multitude of the, um, the, the, the different papers and so, what you see coming out is him linking those two and their thinking to implications for the um, search for equity in health. And because, as he said, there, is a, um, there seems to be a natural tendency of the economic system to uh, make for distribution that might not be equitable, to go about doing some allocations that may not end up being fair, or at least adhering to the principles of social justice. It means, therefore, that in the case of health, especially because if we are saying that health is this capability enhancing um, asset, whereby virtue of individuals being endowed and, and with some stock of health and being able to maintain that health, that asset enables the individual to be able to enjoy life to be able to consume basic goods and services, to be able to, to, to realize other objectives, then it means that because, for example, it may be that by virtue of being a healthy individual, the person could go out, you could engage in productive activities, you could work and mind the family and acquire goods and services that you will want for things and so. What then? Um, Theodore's work seems to bring true is that if this is the case, then it means that health is an asset that the individual, by virtue of having it as a dual property good, where you are both consuming the good and you are, you are producing the good by virtue of the kinds of things that you take in to produce health, and it is enabling you it means that that is impacting on the individual's welfare. And if it's impacting on the individual's welfare and having the spin-off impacts in terms of the economy and so, then it is something that the state may want to ensure that individuals can have fair access to, that you could have a fair enough um, uh, a chance of being a healthy individual. So it means, therefore, that we will see this coming true where in terms of primary care interventions, it would not be because you happen to be born to a poor mother or you are going to be born to a poor mother that you should be debarred from access to basic immunization and preventive care and prenatal care and so on. It must be that those things should be available to you even if you don't have the, um, the, the, the economic well-being. The importance of health as a capability enhancing asset would therefore suggest a role for the state in facilitating a superior outcome. And that what Carl Theodore's work seems to suggest is that we cannot afford to take the chance with this particular sector, the commodities being produced in here, we cannot take the chance to leave it up to the me uh, market mechanism. Health financing. health financing and equity. Since the context of the health system in the Caribbean 
is a socioeconomic environment and so on where inequity tends to prevail, it is important that the health financing system incorporates enough of the countervailing elements and so on um, to, to elements if equity is to be a feature of the health system. If we are to get the outcomes that we want, then what he's saying again is that the way in which we go about financing the system must also put the system on the willing side, on the winning side of being able to deliver equitable outcomes. And central to that would be a strong enough um, um, role for, um, for, solid, for, for pooling of funds. This will require struct, constructing a financing system where the main pillars are themselves equity oriented. These are some of the pillars that we'll usually look at, the revenue and so on, of the, um, in terms of financing of health systems. And we pull out from those for special attention the social insurance and the general revenues when we are thinking in terms of putting the health system on the winning side. In other words, what I think I'm seeing coming out of the work is that we cannot, again, and I'm using this a bit often, but we cannot afford to leave the financing of the health system either totally or largely up to individual capacities. It may be that given the importance of this, it would be then that we would want to ensure that when we go about financing the goods and services that I could have access to, or, or somebody else could have access to, whatever their socioeconomic circumstances or the, or the circumstances of their household, that it's done in such a way that they could get, um, they, 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 they could get uh, equitable access to the goods and services that they need. Now, there's a lot that we are not that I'm not necessarily saying here, and I suspect um, because because the work is so much, and um, but and I, but, but we we could talk as the questions and so come up. Since the last two pillars, the private health insurance and the out of pocket, are directly linked, and so. Um, to the distribution of income, what we would want to ensure is that we don't have people's capacity to access services just being related to how much money they happen to be able to pull out of their pockets for their savings or so, um, or how, how secure they are in terms of private health insurance. We want to go beyond that. This means that national health policy which gives preeminence to equity as universal health coverage does, will want to ensure that we build on a strong platform where general revenues and social or national health insurance might be concerned. Um, WHO has repeatedly made a point that health systems will perform better if, um, or words to this effect, that we limit the out-of-pocket uh, payments. Theodore's conclusion is that private health insurance will make positive contributions to population health if the distribution of income in the society is itself tending to equity. So yes, we, and we are very happy, we need to have the private insurance, we can have that. But in terms of the contribution to and ensuring that we get the outcomes we want to get in health, as Mrs. Gittins Baines and, and, and the panel earlier today, um, the armchair panel mentioned, if we want that, then it means that we may need to go um, a bit further to solidarity based financing. And it may be that the elusiveness of implementation of social or national health insurance in our region might also be something that is causing um, better equ or greater equity in the outcomes in the health system to continue to elude us. And that then I want to end by um, just mentioning these three things. 
from what I'm seeing from Carl Theodore's work over the years from 86 to now, in the area of equity, I'm seeing that he's saying um, equity and efficiency, two sides of the same coin, um, no need for the nervousness there. It's not that when we um, ask for greater equity in the health system and the way in which services are delivered, that people could get access to decent health care, even regardless to their circumstances, regardless to where they happen to be born or live and so on, that does not mean that we are calling for a compromise of efficiency. Health is wealth. We are seeing that coming through your health is your wealth. A nation's health is the nation's wealth. And it means, therefore, if that is so, then equity in the sector um, becomes extremely important. Um, and in that, because of the natural tendency of the market system in terms of the distribution efforts and so on, this is one commodity that we definitely don't want to leave up to the market forces. We want to recognize any time, and it's in the areas in which the market is failing and for other systems to kick in to take care of that failure. Thank you. So to, to anybody that is, that is into this, uh, what you have just seen is, is significant. This is um, kind of the, 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 for those of you who like jazz, what you just saw Dr. Lafugard presenting, the work of Prof. Theodore, is like watching George Benson play Wes Montgomery. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really priceless um, moment. I, I actually took a little clip of video uh, that I'll share with you uh, later. I, I think this is great. It's re really great. 